Hi, my name is Deborah Loder. I'm the registered dietitian here at Wickenburg Community Hospital, and I welcome you today to our Facebook Live talking about inflammation and nutrition. So first I'll talk about exactly what inflammation is. Inflammation is the body's way of protecting itself. It, it consists of several chemical reactions that help fight off infections and increase blood flow to places that need healing. It also generates pain so that you will know something's wrong in your body. Um, unfortunately, with anything, too much inflammation can, be, um, can cause serious damage. We all have a little bit of, of inflammation, like I said, so that you know something's wrong. When you cut your finger and you think, oh, it's gonna be okay, you just wrap it in a bandage, but then it gets hot and swollen and infected, that shows you that, okay, a Band-Aid isn't gonna get it. I'm gonna to have to get some more help for this finger. So that's, um, that kind of inflammation actually affects a lot of processes in the body. Um, oftentimes, inflammation can be um, compared to fire. You know, a fire in the fireplace can keep us warm and can give us nice ambiance and make us really happy. But when that fire gets out of control, it can be very, very um, destructive, just like inflammation can be if it gets out of control in the body. A little bit is good and too much is, is bad. But we're now finding out also that even if there's just a little inflammation in the body, if it goes on for a long time, that's chronic inflammation and even that small amount can affect your, your body and cause some damage. Um, so how there are a number of, of diseases that are based on inflammation. And so those are Alzheimer's disease, asthma, some cancers, chronic obstructive lung disease is an inflammation of the lungs, chronic pain is inflammation, type two diabetes has, there's a connection between inflammation and type two diabetes, as well as heart disease, inflammatory bowel disease, stroke, and some of the autoimmune um, diseases like lupus and um, rheumatoid arthritis. So how do you know if you have too much inflammation? Well, we can all benefit by trying to stay, be healthy and not have inflammation in our bodies, but you can talk to your doctor if you have a concern, and the doctor will do a blood test that measures uh, the level of C-reactive protein in your blood, and that can help identify whether or not you do have inflammation. So, there are several types of inflammation. There can be the short-term or acute inflammation or long-lasting or chronic inflammation. Acute inflammation is inflammation that goes away in a few hours or a few days, like the cut on your finger. Chronic inflammation can last for months or even years, and it causes conditions like cancer, heart disease, diabetes, Alzheimer's disease. Inflammation and arthritis is also a, a big thing out there. Rheumatoid arthritis, um, psor psoriatic arthritis, gouty arthritis are all types of inflammation. Um, so if you have painful joints, that might be a time to talk with your doctor Symptoms of inflammation can include, include red, redness around the area, like the finger cut, a swollen joint that may be warm to the touch. If you have a swollen joint and it's warm or red, you can probably have some inflammation in that joint. Joint pain and joint stiffness as well, and sometimes a joint that may not work as well. So it's hard to get up because your knees are not, are not um, strong enough to get you up out of the chair. So that can be, that can be inflammation. Um, inflammation may also cause flu-like symptoms, including fever, chills, um, 
fatigue or loss of memory, loss of energy, headache, loss of appetite, um, muscle stiffness. So those are other symptoms of inflammation. So what causes inflammation? Well, inflammation happens when chemicals from your body, body's white cells, enter your blood and tissues, and they're trying to protect the body from invaders or from the bad guys, okay? And this raises the blood flow to that area, but it can, all, and that's what causes the redness, that's what causes the, the swelling and the, um, and the stiffness, and that t uh, triggers nerve endings to cause pain. So that's how it works. And once again, it, they can test this by looking for that C-reactive um, C -reactive protein. So how do we diagnose these diseases? Well, once again, if you have painful joints, that's the first sign. And then you, you go to your doctor, and like I said before, you get some blood tests done. So what can we do about, about inflammation? Well, helping inflammation, um, helping to prevent inflammation or helping to control inflammation, there's a lot of things that we can do. Sometimes the doctor will prescribe medications, you know, anti-inflammatory drugs um, like um, ibuprofen, aspirin, naproxen. Those are some of the things that the doctor will give you. You can also, sometimes the doctor will use uh, like cortisone, corticosteroids like uh, prednisone. Sometimes there are other drugs that the doctor will prescribe for you. But we know also that lifestyle changes can help. And so basically, I'm here today to talk to you more about the lifestyle changes. So one of the things is to quit smoking if you smoke. Inflammation. Um, or smoking really impacts inflammation and helps it increase. Also, limit how much alcohol you drink and keep at a healthy weight for your height. Also, managing your stress will help you with fighting inflammation, as will getting regular physical therapy and plenty of, of um, sleep at night. It's important to get a good night's sleep um, and we recommend between seven and nine hours every night. Sometimes you need surgery to help manage the inflammation, and that's where you would see um, a doctor, uh, osteo, um, I'm sorry, just left me. Anyway, see a joint doctor, and uh, you would maybe have a knee replacement surgery or a hip replacement, and sometimes they can just do um, like a clean out where those bones are inflamed and muscles inflamed and they can just kind of go in there and, and clean it up and help you with the, the uh, pain from that inflammation. The other thing that you can do is follow um, an anti-inflammatory diet. It's kind of a new thing that we're hearing anti-inflammatory diet, but really it's, it's it's not so new because we have known for a while that there are chemicals called phytonutrients in our foods that really help fight inflammation. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the uh, particular foods after I talk about foods that you want to avoid. So avoiding some foods is just as important or more important than eating the correct foods. So you want to avoid too much sugar or high fructose corn syrup. Those are found in a lot of processed foods. So it's really important to avoid those processed foods that have a lot of sugar. Um, we, we've known for a while that sugar can be harmful and can cause a lot of different um, health related uh, problems. And so we want to avoid that. Not completely, I don't say to avoid it completely, but limit it. Everything in moderation has always been my motto. So if you have sugar, that's fine. Enjoy it in small amounts and not very often. Um, one of the other things is that affects inflammation is something that we call trans fats. Trans fats are um, fats that are made when hydrogen is 
um, mixed with a, a liquid oil, like a liquid um, vegetable oil. And then it's hydrogenated, you may have heard that word. And what happens is now it's a, hy a hydrogenated fat or a trans fat, and they are not health they are not heart healthy and they can also really affect the inflammation on in our bodies. You'll find those fats in things like french fries and popcorn, like microwavable popcorn sometimes has it. Certain margarines and vegetable shortenings, um, packaged cakes and cookies, you know, all of the snacky foods that we, we love to eat. So once again, look for the word partially hydrogenated vegetable oil on the label and then you'll know if that's in that particular snack food. Once again, you don't have to completely eliminate that from your diet, but, but limit it. Just once in a while you have a treat and then um, the rest of the time try to eat a more healthy diet. There's some evidence also about some of the seed oils uh, causing inflammation and that would be things like, um, uh, like uh, safflower oil, soybean oil, different uh, vegetable oils as well. They may pr promote inflammation because they have a high omega-6 level. We need some omega-6 in our diet, but we want to have a good ra ratio between omega-6 and omega-3 fatty acids. So the omega-6 can be in those, those oils that are come from, um, from seeds and vegetables. Um, we actually we get enough of the omega-6 in our daily diet so that we don't really have to worry about having any more so we need to concentrate more on the omega-3 fatty acids and I'll talk to you about that in just a minute the other thing is carbohydrates refined carbohydrates are what we want to avoid um, carbohydrates get a really bad reputation because um, because of a lot of misinformation out there. The, the carbohydrates that you want to avoid are refined. They're things like white bread, crackers, um, cookies, those types of things. Carbohydrates that are called complex carbohydrates are what we want to focus on, and that includes whole grains and fruits and vegetables. So watch the, the refined carbs because they're also not good for our waistline because they don't have any fiber in them, but they also can cause inflammation. Excess alcohol can also contribute to um, inflammation, so we want to make sure that you're, for women, it's one standard drink a day is considered healthy, and for men, two standard drinks per day, and that's like a small glass of wine, a beer, or two for a man. So we want to limit the alcohol to that. I'm also going to talk a little bit about the Mediterranean diet in a few minutes. And on the Mediterranean diet, um, they, it actually recommends a glass of red wine every day. Another food that we want to avoid to help avoid inflammation is processed meats. Meats that are processed like bologna and salami, different things like that, hot dogs, those foods um, have a lot of different components in them that can cause heart disease. They're high in sodium and high fat usually. So for that reason, they can contribute to heart disease and different problems like that. But they also contribute to inflammation. So to stay as healthy as pops possible and keep inflama inflammation down, we can follow a really good healthy diet. One of the things that um, I often recommend is berries. Berries are really um, filled with fiber. They're filled with vitamins and minerals. You can, you know, they're almost always in the market and sometimes they're more expensive than others. But these days we get berries from everywhere. So we don't have to wait until the early spring anymore. We can get berries all year round. Um, berries contain antioxidants called anthocyanins, and they have an anti-inflammatory risk um, effect that ha may help uh, with decreasing your inflammation. There's um, the body, um, the body produces 
natural killer cells, and they're called NK cells, and those help your immune system function properly. And one of the things that berries do, this anthocyanin, it will help to create more of those killer cells to help keep down the inflammation. So eat those berries. The next food that I'll talk to you a little bit about is fatty fish. Fatty fish like um, salmon and sardines and herring, mackerel, anchovies, lake, or lake trout, those things have a lot of omega-3 fatty acids and they are very healthy for us and they also help fight inflammation. I talked a little bit about the omega-6 and, and now we're talking omega-3 and so you really need to um, try to eat some fish two or three times a week is what's recommended. There are um, omega-3 fatty acid supplements out there but try to get it from your from your fish and um, and I and flax, flax seed it has um, some as well. Another food is broccoli. Broccoli is a, a powerhouse of nutrition. It is called a cruciferous vegetable and so other vegetables that help fight inflammation and really give us a lot of good nutrition are cauliflower and bro uh, Brussels sprouts. Kale is also um, in that family. So if you eat a lot of cruciferous vegetables, you're getting a lot of fiber. So fiber helps us with our blood cholesterol, with our blood glucose. It helps keep us full and satisfied. So these are the reason, some of the reasons for eating a lot of cruciferous and other vegetables. But they also have the, the anti-inflammatory effect from the phytonutrients that are in them. So remember those dark green leafy vegetables if you want to help fight, fight inflammation and remember that they also help with controlling blood glucose and blood, sh um, blood cholesterol because of the fiber in them. Avocados is another su superfood. Um, we call it a superfood these days. They're packed with potassium. They have lots of magnesium. And once again, fiber, lots of fiber. People say to me, yes, but they, are, they have so much fat in them. Well, they do, they have a lot of fat, and because of that, they're relatively high in calories, but the, the fat in them is heart-healthy, monounsaturated fat. So it's a, it's a heart-healthy fat. Avocado is also um, linked to a, a reduced risk of cancer, and it helps with inflammation. So why not have some avocado every day? The other thing is avocado oil is on the market now to use with um, in salad dressings um, to just drizzle a bit on a salad. It's really, it's flavorful, very heart healthy. So you might want to investigate um, avocado oil. Green tea, you've probably heard that green tea is a really healthy beverage to drink and it is, it has anti-inflammatory compounds in it as well. It helps also to reduce um, the risk of heart disease and cancer, Alzheimer's disease, helps, helps with um, reducing the effects of obesity and other conditions as well. It has antioxidants in it as well as anti-inflammatory properties called, okay, I'll see if I can say this one. It's epigalcon tension three gallate. So luckily we can um, abbreviate that EGCG. And I'm not, a, I'm not terribly good with um, some of these words. So this EGCG in, inhibits inflammation by reducing pro-inflammatory cytokine. So remember I said that those cytokines are part of, of what you can find out from that blood, uh, blood test. So that's what these EC, EGCG will help reduce. Um, green tea can be used for a hot tea beverage. You can use it for um, uh, iced tea. A lot of people put it in um, as a basis to the smoothie that they might be making. So it can be used in a number of ways. 
The next thing is peppers. So peppers, as in bell peppers and as in chili peppers, are really good. They have um, antioxidants called quercetin, that was easier, which may reduce one marker of uh, antioxidative damage in people who have an in inflammatory disease called sarcosidosis. So these, these um, quercetin, uh, where, where is it? Quercetin, quercetin um, may help reduce that. Chili, chili peppers contain something called synaptic acid, and it may also work to reduce inflammation. So I think it's really funny because when I think about chili peppers, I think about something hot and spicy, and and I would think that they wouldn't be go, so good for inflammation, but they really are. Chili peppers in a, in in con in the same, at the same time with black pepper can be really a healthy way to help prevent inflammation. So there's some, on the internet you can look up beverages to help inflammation and you'll find a lot of things that include chili pepper and black pepper and also that include turmeric, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So if you wanna do some investigation on the internet, that's kind of fun thing to do. And if you have any questions about it, you can give me a call here at the hospital. Another food that's really good for um, inflammation is mushrooms. There is um, a mushroom called lion's mane that is a particularly good anti-inflammatory mushroom. They're low in calories. They have a lot of selenium, copper, and B vitamins, so they're really healthy for us. The one thing with mushrooms, though, is they're best eaten um, raw. Cooking seems to affect their anti-inflammatory properties, so it's best to try to eat those raw in a, in a salad, or you could also just lightly cook them by, you know, adding them at the very last minute to an omelet so that they get slightly soft, but they're not fully cooked. Another food is grapes. So they have, um, they have the anthocyanins as well, and that helps with the reduce, reducing inflammation. They, are, they also have um, a compound called Respiratol that is, it has a lot of different health benefits. So grapes every day is a good idea. There's a lot of information out there about how hard healthy grapes are for us, as well as they do help with uh, reducing our inflammation. Turmeric, okay, turmeric is a spice. If you haven't had it, it's orange in color and it, it has a strong earthy flavor. It's also, all, it's often used in curries and other Indian di dishes. Um, it has this compound called curcumin, which is an anti-inflammatory nutrient. A lot of people are drinking it now as a cup of tea, if you will, before bedtime or when they get up in the morning. And the recipes that I've seen consist of either um, skim milk or a plant-based milk like soy milk or rice milk, um, and then maybe some honey for sweetness and then the turmeric. So that that's getting a lot of attention these days. And there is a lot of research out there about this and it it seems that it reduces inflammation related to um, arthritis and diabetes and some other diseases as well. The, the next thing is extra virgin olive oil. So olive oils are, um, you have to look at what you're buying because um, olive oil is either uh, something called um, a pure olive oil or a refined olive oil and some of them then is the virgin olive oil and extra virgin. So what it is, is it de the extra virgin is less processed than the virgin and the, less, and the virgin is less processed than the other. So you wanna shoot for the extra virgin olive oil. But once, just like the mushrooms, it's best to use that oil without heating it. So it's a good thing to add to your salads or to drizzle on 
your vegetables, um, after you cook your vegetables, just drizzle them with a little bit of, of olive oil. I read something this week about um, the amount of olive oil and um, what, I've, what I've come to know this week is maybe about an ounce a day. So about a, a tablespoon or so a day is a good amount to help reduce inflammation. Olive oil, like any oil, is higher in fat I mean, higher in calories because it's a fat, but it's a heart healthy fat and it has a lot of good benefits. So remember, extra virgin olive oil. And then dark chocolate. We've heard about dark chocolate as well. It's rich, it's delicious, it's satisfying, and it can make us really happy. So um, we're so lucky to have that in our lives to help us reduce our inflammation. It's, um, it's a really good uh, food for us, but you have to limit the amounts. So a little dark chocolate candy bar once a day is a great thing. It, um, and then tomatoes. Tomatoes is another um, really good, uh, it's actually a fruit, but we call it a vegetable, to help with inflammation. So eating tomatoes is really good for us. I read also about some a study that looked at drinking tomato juice, and it seems that that's really helpful because tomatoes are an excellent source of lycopene, which helps us reduce inflammation as well as helps either prevent, um, to help prevent cancer as well. Cherries, my sister Charlotte, if you're out there today, my sister loves cherries, and so that's a really good thing. They're rich in antioxidants. They also have the anth anthocyanins and they have the catechins as well. Those help fight inflammation. Um, they're, cherries aren't available all the time, unfortunately. I would love it if they were. But there is cherry juice on the market now. And so if that would help with inflammation as well, just drinking some cherry juice. Um, also, there's cherry and pomegranate juice on the market. So two really good healthy foods for us that are high in phytonutrients and are really helping with preventing disease, especially inflammation. So one of the easiest ways um, to, to look at a, an inflammatory um, diet to help us reduce our inflammation is to look at the Mediterranean diet. I've talked before about the Mediterranean diet and, and I don't like the word diet. I'd rather talk about it as a lifestyle because it is truly a lifestyle. Not only does it include eating healthfully, but it also includes uh, exercise, activity, and remember that little small glass of wine every day. So the Mediterranean diet is based on uh, plant foods. So whole grains, fruits, and vegetables, along with nuts, beans, lentils, and then limited amounts of fish and white meat, um, white meat like chicken and turkey. Red, red meat is saved for a small amount every so often. So it's a treat at the end of the month or um, payday. So the Mediterranean diet is, is really just that. It's, it's foods that are gathered in the Mediterranean basin, basin and it's the fruits and the vegetables that are, are, um, that are grown and, are, and um, grown there and fish that comes out of the Mediterranean Sea. So, how do we do that here? We focus on um, beans and whole grains for our protein sources, and then small amounts of fish. And like I said a little while ago, um, the fatty fishes like salmon and, and sardines are really good for us, and we need to have it about three times a week. So that will be a protein source as well. Also, tuna is in that, albacore tuna is another part, another fish that you can enjoy. And then all of the fruits and the vegetables that we've talked about. And you focus mostly on the dark 
dark yellows, the dark oranges. So things like sweet potatoes, butternut squash, acorn squash, beets, bright beets, carrots, all of those brightly colored fruits and vegetables are really uh, a good part of the Mediterranean diet. And then oils, if you are in the Mediterranean diet, you use extra virgin olive oil. And all the foods, if you think about it, these are all fresh, unprocessed foods. The Mediterranean diet is extremely low in processed foods. So that's one of the easiest um, ways to, to um, help fight inflammation if you want to follow a lifestyle. And once again, we talked a little bit about this already, but some of the other important things are to not smoke, if you do smoke, to try to stop, and then limit your alcohol, one um, drink a day for women, two for men. And staying very active will help with inflammation as will getting a good night's sleep and managing both your stress level and your weight. So that's about it that I have for you today. Um, if you do have questions, you're welcome to call the hospital and or come and see me. I'd love to set an appointment with you and have you come visit me um, here in my office. Our next uh, Facebook Live will be August 19th and we're going to be talking about prebiotics and probiotics. So I hope that you have a great day today. It's hot out there and um, I know it's hard for you to wear your masks but please keep wearing those masks and washing your hands and stay healthy. And if I can help you with any of that, please call me. Thank you. Have a great day.